please turn with me to Genesis chapter 4. Genesis chapter 4, we'll read from verse 6 to 10. Genesis chapter 4, verse 6 to 10. And the word of God says, So the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry? Why has your countenance fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin lies at the door. And its desire is for you, but you should rule over it. Now Cain talked with Hebel, his brother. And it came to pass, when they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Hebel, his brother, and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, where is Abel, your brother? He said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? And he said, what have you done? The voice of your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. May God bless his holy word. Brothers and sisters in Christ, our sermon today is titled, Am I my neighbor's keeper? Am I my neighbor's keeper? Friends, long time ago when my wife and I and our kids lived in Kenya, there was a lady who had no food with her children. And it was one day early in the morning that that neighbor, she lived a little bit further from our house. Her children did not have food since the day before. So she thought at the night and said, what am I going to do? What am I going to give my children? They are starving to death. So she thought about Joyce and Nicholas. And she said, tomorrow morning, I'll wake up early in the morning and I will walk to Joyce and Nicholas's house. And I know I'll get some food. The lady woke up early in the morning and she walked long distance to come to our house. We were still sleeping. She knocked on the door. My wife opened the door. And the lady said, Joyce, I came to your house this morning because my children have not had food since yesterday. And I was coming to see whether you have anything that you can give me to go and give my children. <laughs> and my wife told her, come in. So she came in the house and, you know, we woke up. My wife prepared breakfast. She gave some breakfast to her. And she went ahead and gave her some food. And she told her, just take to your children. A neighbor, taking care of a neighbor. Friends, why am I giving you this story? I'm giving you this story because, my friends, we are our neighbor's keepers. Joy is not in share with that family because we, we, we are rich people. But God tells us to love our neighbors as thyself. We are our brothers and sisters' keepers. We are our neighbors' keepers. God created us to live a peace and a fellowship with each other. That's why he did. He created us, all his people, to live in peace and a fellowship with one another. When he created Adam, he put him in the garden of Eden. God saw it was not good for that man to be lonely in that bush by himself. So God gave him a good and deep sleep. He did the first surgery on the left side of his ribs. And they found him a good, beautiful wife, Eve. Then they went and stayed in the garden of Eden and told them, Look, I will give you instructions of what I want you to do here. So follow those instructions. It was husband and a wife. With no time, the family started growing. Cain was born. Then Hebel was born. It was a family of four, my friends. When you dig deeper in the book of Genesis, you find out that Adam and Eve had many other kids, sons and daughters. Friends, when it comes to fellowship, koinonia in Greek, we do so because God created us to live together as human beings, giving each other fellowship and support and encouragement. It is very important to our living, loving God. Ladies and gentlemen, so the question is, am I my neighbor's keeper? Am I my neighbor's keeper? Well, there is nowhere else I can find answers. I cannot give you my opinions. 
I can only turn to the word of God that indirects us or gives us the answer to that big question. If you don't mind, please turn with me to Matthew chapter 22. Matthew chapter 22, God will answer that question for us in his word. Matthew chapter 22, verse 39b. Matthew chapter 22, verse 39b. So, am I my neighbor's keeper? God tells us this in Matthew chapter 22, verse 39b. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. That's not Dr. Nicholas's word. That is God's word. The Bible says, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. So as you ask this question, am I my neighbor's keeper? The answer from our God is yes. You cannot let your neighbor to starve their children. We cannot live without encouraging our neighbors who have lost a loved one, my friends. We are our brothers and sisters keepers. We are our neighbors keepers, my friends, according to the word of God. And when the word of God speaks, God himself speaks, my friends. He's telling us as Christians, yes, we are our neighbors keepers. God created us and put us in this world for a good reason. He just did not create us and put us here for, for no reason. Not just to occupy space. He put us here, my friends, for a good reason. He wants us to serve him. He wants us to minister to his people. He wants us to encourage those who are struggling. Those who are depressed and stressed out, my friends. He wants us to minister to those who are in need. Praying together, fellowshipping with each other, my friends. We are a family, God's family. Am I my neighbor's keeper? Making some observation in verse 6 here. So the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? And why has your countenance fallen? God, the loving God, the creator of all, communicates with Cain. And God is very clear in his communication with Cain, the son of Adam and Eve. So God asked, why are you angry, Cain? What's the matter, Cain? Your mood and the behavior has changed. What's going on, son? And ladies and gentlemen, Cain, his, his, his mood has changed. He, was, he seemed to be so angry. And God was wondering. God had, been, had been given him and his brother instructions to worship him. And you see, my friends, when God gives his people directions, we have to follow God's directions. So Cain and Abel were given direction to give the best worship to God. You know, God, as he told him, I told you and your brother Abel, what you do in worship? I really did. But did you, Cain, you chose to be rebellious. What is, the, what is making you to be rebellious? My friends, when sin is in your heart, sin misleads God's people. Cain was angry with God and he was angry with Abel because his worship, because of the poor decision he made to not worship God righteously according to his word, he chose to be rebellious. This can happen to us today, my friends. We are Bible-believing, born again men and the women of God. We can choose to be rebellious or we can choose to be obedient to God. Obedient is better than sacrifice, my friends. Cain made a decision to be rebellious. My friends, sin leads us to be disobedient to God. God would not want to see us be rebellious people. He wants us to be obedient people. And especially Christians, my friends, God wants us to be obedient people. He wants us to lead others to know him as Lord and Savior. God wants you and I to lead others to worship him in the truth and in the spirit of righteousness of heaven. There's no another way, my friends, we can, we can serve God other than to worship him in truth and in spirit. Sin is evil. As Americans, my friends, we have to love our neighbors 
We have to minister to our neighbors. We have to minister to our co-workers. We have to minister to everyone that we meet. Because, you know what, my friends? This Bible provides guidelines for us. And God is telling us, we are our neighbors keepers. You may not know what you can do as you help your neighbor. As you show your neighbor then God, God's love, you may be the only someone that is someone is waiting to hear from you. And that person will give his or her life to Christ Jesus. God told Cain, your brother obeyed me, but you chose to disobey me. What is going on, Cain? You see, the anger that Cain had is because his little brother's worship was accepted by God. Because he did, he, he did follow God's instructions, but Cain did not follow God's instructions. This applies to us, my friends. God may be asking you, why are you angry? Why are you frustrated? Why are you, why are you rude? You see, those are issues that we face here on earth, my friends. And as Christians, we should lead by example. We should be the ones to show others how to love their neighbors. We should be the ones to show others how to walk the walk and talk the talk according to the scriptures. I teach pastors at Carolina College of Biblical Studies. And this week, there was somehow some frustration in class. Because of the things pastors are facing in the local church. Because people are upset, people are frustrated, people are angry. They don't even want to hear about this God anymore. What has happened to us Christians? As pastors continue being depressed, my friends, it is because we have chosen to be rebellious against God. And ladies and gentlemen, God is calling us back to his Bible. There will be no one else who will take the people back to the Bible in America except Christians. It is our calling, my friends. Let us not be Cain. Let us be Hebel, my friends. Let's worship the living God. Don't let anything else interfere with your worship to your God. That's very important, my friends. Let us obey God. Let us follow his instructions. Let us lead others to know we have to love our neighbors. We have to minister to those that need our service as we serve our God. Cain is angry. He's upset. God is looking for answers, but he, he knows what has happened. Cain made his own decision. Just like us. We make our own decisions. We cannot force anyone to give his or our life to Jesus Christ. Pastors, as they cry tears, 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 because pastors love their members. I love my members. I love you and others who are not. I love you. I pray for you like crazy because I love you. I want you someday to be in heaven. I will give you the best that God has to give me because if I don't give you the truth, your blood will be counted on my hands. And my friends, this is the God who told Cain, Cain, you just don't disobey. I hope we will not be like Cain, my friends. That's my prayer. Verse 7, listen to this. If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin lies at the door. And it is desire is for you. But you should rule over it. You should rule over it. You know, because of what Cain experienced to see his brother's worship being accepted by God, he became jealous and angry. He's angry at his, his brother. But God is trying to correct Cain. He's trying to correct. If you do well, Cain, just do well. Make a choice. Will you not be accepted when you do right, Cain? If you do not do well, sin lies at the door and it desires for you. But you should rule over it. You should control yourself. Not to be sinful. Not to sin before God. Do well, Cain. Yes, Cain was a jealous man. God spoke to him in a loving, warning way. If you do well, Cain, if you do this, Cain, listen up, Cain. If you do well, 
repenting, you will be able to look up again in freedom from anger and guilt. Okay? If you do well, if you repent of your sin, the sin of jealous and anger, if you sin, I will set you free from that sin, from that anger, from that guilt. And you'll be able to receive my blessings. I will accept your worship. My friends, this applies to us. God is looking here. He's asking us, if you do well, will you not be accepted? If you do not do well, sin lies at the door and it's desires for you. But you should rule over it. Ladies and gentlemen, there is no small and big sin. Sin is sin, my friends. Sin grows like a balloon. See when you are blowing balloon, put it in the balloon. The balloon continues to grow fat and fat and fat and fat. And when, when that balloon is full of air and there is no another space, what happens? Pooh! It bursts. Sin grows. And an unrepented sin is a growing sin, my friends. It will ruin your life. God was giving Cain an opportunity to repent of his sin. But is Cain listening? Is Cain listening? Maybe, my friends, this 2020 has been a very challenging year for all of us. Very frustrating year for all of us. Man, an unbelievable year for all of us. But maybe God is giving us an opportunity to make things right. Maybe sin has controlled all of us for far too long. And God is saying, you know what? I'm giving you a chance like I did give to Cain. Make that decision. Maybe God is telling us that, my friends. But I tell you what, my friends, no one else, no one else can lead America back to God than the Christians. Bible-believing Christians, born again. Those who believe in this authoritative word of God himself. God never makes mistakes. The more we compromise this truth, my friends, the more people continue to spiritually anemic. That is not required for us to be, to let people grow spiritually anemic. Why? Because of the compromised gospel, my friends. Cain, God has Cain. Cain, if you don't do well by continuing to hate Abel, sin is knocking at your door. Let it don't destroy you. That's what happens, my friends. The devil want to mislead God's people. Cain was being misled by the devil. The devil filled hate in his heart to hate his brother, to have jealousy on his brother, to hate God. He was being misused by the devil. So the, 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 the sin was knocking on his heart, ready to destroy him. That happens to us too, my friends. When we don't listen to God, sin. That leads you, that misleads you. The devil misleads you to hate your neighbor. To not be respectful, obedient to God. To not honor God. The devil will mislead you to tell you, don't honor this God. Don't obey this God. You know, the devil is very conniving. He's very sneaky. He knows how to twist his stuff to persuade you. So that he can mislead you to sin. Then that sin is knocking the door of your heart, ready to destroy you. Friends, God is telling us as Christians to lead our fellow Americans to love each other again. These are facts, my friends. The church, the living church, the, 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 the local church had been sleeping. We got to wake up the Bible-believing church to lead people to love God. Christ and love his people. It is time, my friends, before it is too late. Who will tell us this, my friends? No one else will say this. Only the pastors will do this, my friends. But their hands are tied. Their hands are tied. Do you want your, your, the pastor's blood to be counted on your hands? You don't want that fight with God. Let the pastors tell you what God has to say in his word. Christians, we got to love like Christ. We got to be the neighbors that love their neighbors, my friends. 
Feed that neighbor. Encourage that neighbor. Pray for that neighbor, my friends. Pray for America. Oh, yeah. And God he tells Cain, Cain, Abel's, your brother's desire is for you to be a role model to lead him. If you do well, you lead your brother. Your little brother need to see you as a role model. Ladies and gentlemen, people need to see Christians as role models. Yes. Oh, Pastor Nicholas, don't say that. You know what, my friends? I've been preaching this word for 36 years, man, and I love you to death. From Africa to the United States, I teach pastors and missionaries and youth pastors. I tell them this. If we don't give you the truth, if we don't give you this, my friends, I won't be the first to be thrown in hell. But I won't give you this because I love you and I care for you. Johnny will give you the same, my friends. You will take it, you use it as God leads you. I cannot force you. God told Cain, your brother need you. You need to lead your brother because you are the older brother. You got to be a role model to lead him if you do well. Christians, America needs Christian role models. We are the ones, my friends, to lead our fellow Americans to love their neighbors, to be their neighbors' keepers and brothers and sisters' keepers. We are the ones. No one is judging anyone, my friends. We just stand with the word of God. This is all what we, be we believe, my friends. Nothing else. God don't need our opinions. When it comes to God's word, my friends, it is God's word. When the scriptures speak, God speaks. We got to set a good example as Christians. Cain's false worship and the easy Eden hate and anger costed him God's rejection. His worship was rejected because in his worship there was so much sneakiness. There was so much evil and sin in it. God rejected his fake worship. You know what my friends, Christians? We cannot, we cannot, we cannot fool God. When we are doing things according to his word, he knows it, he sees it, he acknowledges it. When we don't do it his way, my friends, he's watching at us in shock and in grief and in disbelief. Because we have carried this Bible for far too long. How can we not love, love like him? How can we not love our neighbors as he said in the Bible? Am I my neighbor's keeper? That's the word of God, my friends. And God says, yes. Don't you want God to... to, to to obey, to, 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 to accept your worship. I know all of us want God to accept our worship. But it will be a shock and a disbelief for our God to reject our worship because of the way we live our lives. You don't have to do much to, to commit sin. My friends, God wants us to worship him in the truth and in the spirit, even during challenging times. These are tough times. We can't run away and they say, you know what? We can't throw our hands up and say, you know what? We give up. No, God never called us to be with us. I want you to look around and think about how many, how many idol gods, idol worshipers we have in this country. But those areas are growing. Those religions are growing. The only Bible-believing church is the one that is declining. Think about that. Think about that. One, I'm, I'm not going to call names of religions. But think about them in this country. A nation that was rooted in the Christian principles. But we Christians, because you know what? We have hidden, in, hidden in sin in our hearts. We don't show God's love anymore. We are not role models. God is calling us back, my friends. Verse 8. Now Cain talked with Hebel, his brother. And it came to pass. When they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and killed him. Mm. The two brothers, my friends, Cain and Abel, they had sat down, had a conversation about their worship to God. But in his heart, Cain's heart was filled with hate, jealous against his young brother. 
So Cain's evil, sinful attitude of jealousy rage turned into evil action. He turned against his own brother. Cain murdered his own little brother because of hate, because of jealousy, because of sin. You don't have to kill someone physically to commit sin. You can just look at Betty and I hate Betty. Just by saying that, that's sin. Why would you hate Betty? What did Betty do to you? I mean, it doesn't take long. We are the Christians in the 21st century, my friends. The world is collapsing because there is no role model Christian leadership. The nation is collapsing because Christians are missing in action, my friends. God wanted Christians to return the nation back to God. We got to go on our knees and pray for our country, my friends. We got to lead by example, my friends. No matter how many times we hear people complaining and whining and they this, that, that. We have no excuse, my friends. We are the Bible-believing people. We are the Bible-believing people. When Jesus Christ comes, we will not be giving an example, an excuse and tell Jesus, you know what, Jesus, the reason I did not show love to my neighbor is because so and so did that. That is a careless excuse and God will never accept that. The decision we make as Christians must be the one that God has given us to follow in the Bible. Anything else is a gimmick, my friends. God wants us to be honest, Bible-believing, loving people. This does not mean that we compromise the word of God to entertain people. No. I know there are people who don't even like Christians. But you know what, my friends? Let us be the role models. Let us be the ones to show that, yes, there is something different in us. Christ Jesus. Let us show how we can love our neighbors. Let us be those loving neighbors, people. But my friends... Cain murdering his brother. The message did not stop there, my friends. God wanted to know Abel's murder, Abel's death was not in vain. Although Abel is dead, today he still witnesses to us that the life of faith in Christ is the life that counts. He may be dead, but he's still witnessing to us because the, la the life of faith in Christ is the only faith that counts. Turn with me to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 4, please. Hebrews 11, verse 4. Hebrews, the book of Hebrews. You see, God wants us, want us to be faithful people. He wants us to be loving people. Uh, people. He don't want us to be disobedient people. God wants us to be obedient people. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 4 says, By faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts. And through it, he being dead, still speaks. Did you hear what the word of God says? By faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts. And through it, he being dead, still speaks. Ladies and gentlemen, faith in Christ, my friends. Cain showed faith in Christ. Even though he's gone, we're still learning from that faith that Cain, uh, Abel had, sorry. Abel had faith in Christ. Cain disobeyed God. He committed sin. Abel was a faithful young man. God wants us to be faithful men and women in the 21st century. He is our God, my friends. He don't want us to be hateful people. No. You see, my friends, when you disobey God, when you disobey God, there are consequences. There are consequences, my friends. 
There are consequences. If you don't mind turning with me to Deuteronomy chapter 28. You know, you see, you see, God wants the best for us. God wants the best for us. Deuteronomy chapter 28. Because God wants us to listen to him. God wants us to obey him. As Christians, Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15 to 16. Here is the word of God, my friends. Deuteronomy 28. Verse 15 and 16 says, But it shall come to pass, if you do not obey the voice of the Lord, your God, to observe carefully all his commandments and his statutes, which I command you today, that all these curses will come upon you and overtake you. Cursed shall you be in the city, and the cursed shall you be in the country. God is telling us the consequences of being disobedient. Has he told Cain? There are consequences. Look at the first 20. The same chapter. The Lord will send on you cursing, confusion, and the rebuke in all that you set your hand to, to do. Until you are destroyed. Until you perish quickly because of the wickedness of your doings in which you have forsaken me. Ladies and gentlemen. What Cain did was wrong and sinful. He murdered his own brother. Because of jealous, because of sin, instead of controlling his sin, he let the sin rule over him. This can happen to us, my friends. God wants us to be faithful servants of himself. Verse 9 and 10. Then the Lord said to Cain, Where is Abel, your brother? He said, I do not know. That's another scene, my friends. Am I my brother's keeper? And he said, what have you done? The voice of your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. Oh, Lord. My friends, Cain had hardened his heart. He's not even listening to God. He's being disobedient to God. Our faith in Christ Jesus matters, my friends. All what we need to do is to have faith in Christ Jesus as Christians and lead by example. Be role models, no matter what people are saying. As Christians, man, you should not just listen to anyone who is saying anything. Listen to God as a Christian. The problem we are facing today is because Christians are listening to every side. Anything that you hear, you are listening to it. We got to be focused on Christ Jesus, my friends. Don't worry of what people are saying. Be focused on Christ Jesus. God knew what Cain did to his brother Hebel. But God wanted Cain to confess. But then what happened? Did you hear what happened? Then the Lord said to Cain, where is Hebel, your brother? He said, I do not know. Cain is a liar. He just lied to the living God. God knows where, where Hebel is. And then you see how rude Cain became. Am I my brother's keeper? Am I my brother's keeper? Think about that. That's a big question, my friends. God taught us earlier, yes, we are our brother's keepers. We are our sister's keepers. Cain hardened his heart. Instead of confessing, repenting, God gave him an opportunity. But Cain lied to God. Lying is sin. Lying is sin, my friends. There is no good lie, my friends. There is no small and big lie. Lies are lie. Liars will never end in, the, end in the kingdom of heaven. That's biblical, my friends. Lying is sin. Cain lied to God. How many of us are lying to God today? How many of people, how many Christians are lying to God? How many Christians are rude to God as well? Probably we are saying, am I my brother's keeper? Am I my neighbor's keeper? Because of arrogancy. It's not good for Christians to be arrogant people. It's good for us to be loving people. We got to be role models. God asked Cain, what have you done? 
the voice of your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. I can hear his voice, his blood crying for me in the ground. What have you done? So God is asking us, what have we done? What have we done? What is happening in the world today? Why are these calamities going on? What can we do to rescue the disaster that we see on earth today, Christians? The answer is, we just return back to God and leave our fellow brothers and sisters to return back to God and the Christians to return the nation back to God. That's what is needed, my friends. That's what is needed, Christians. We have lost focus. Am I my neighbor's keeper? We send missionaries all over the world. All over the world. Over 5,000. Over 5,000 missionaries are all over the world. From us, you send them. You pay. You give. Sharing the good news with the people that they have never met before. Loving those neighbors that they have never before. Loving those who don't even look like them, my friends. Who don't talk like them. A missionary led me to Christ Jesus. He baptized me. An American missionary. A white man. If we send those missionaries because the gospel is for everyone, my friends, let us love our neighbors. No matter how they look like, what, what they say, whatever they, we must be the role models. Christians, Christians, it's our calling, man. It's our calling. We cannot abandon our calling, my friends. This is the word of God. God wants us, Brother John, to stand and share the good news. We may be the reason the country is declining. So Christians, because we have taken off our eyes from Christ Jesus, who can, them, who can bless, who has blessed this nation for many years. God pronounced Cain's judgment. Man. God pronounced Cain's judgment. Look at verse 11 as we finish. So now you are cast from the earth, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. At your own time, you can continue reading more and more. My friends, I'm pleading with all Christians in this country, all Bible-believing, born-again men and women, boys and girls, to stand for Christ Jesus' message and love our neighbors. Lead by example. Stand for the authority of God. The nation is crying for help. The help will come from us, Christians. That's all what is needed. Christians to step up and be role models. To lead the nation back to God. Don't listen to compromising messages out there. No. Listen to the voice of God. Love of Christ Jesus. Lead the nation back to that God who has blessed this nation for many, many, many years. Don't listen to anything else, my friends. Don't be sidetracked, Christians. That's the message of God. God wants us to stand for his word. This is his breath. Neotheistas, the breath of God. And God tells us, preach the word of God. Jerusalem, Logon, or Theos in Greek. God is telling us to teach this word. Not opinions, my friends. Because opinions don't count when it comes to spiritual matters of heaven. Only the word of God changes hearts for eternity. Are you willing to be your neighbor's keeper? Are you willing to be the messenger that God has called you to lead people to go back to Christ? Are you willing? Are you willing, my friends? Jesus loves you and I. He cares for us. He gave everything on the cross when he died for you and I. The sufferings that he went on that cross is for all of us, my friends. And someday, Christ is coming back. He's coming back soon and very soon. Jesus is coming back. 
Look at what is happening. Read the book of Revelation. We taught, John and I taught, and you know, for, for years, the book of Revelation. What had been predicted in the book of Revelation is happening today. You see it today, today in America and all over the world. He's about to show up. Jesus is coming back. It's up to us, my friends, to return back to this God. He loves us. He cares for us. Am I my neighbor's keeper? I think he's coming. I don't know what... Hello, and thank you for listening to this sermon. I am Dr. Nicholas Mutedi, the pastor of Forestville Baptist Church. If you enjoyed the sermon, please visit our YouTube channel to view more. Our church is in Wake Forest, North Carolina, and we have Sunday school every Sunday at 9.30 a.m. and worship service at 10.45 a.m. with Bible study every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. For more information, please visit our website at www.fortersfieldbcwf.com. I also have two ministry books available, Segregation in Churches, Providing God's Answer to Solve the Dilemma, and Heaven, the Secure Eternal Home, which are both available in Amazon. Thank you again for watching. I hope that you have been encouraged and that you will tune in for the next sermon. God bless you.